My name's David Ray Pine. I'm one of the instructors at the Wood and Shop Traditional Woodworking School. I'm a period furniture reproduction builder and I work on antique furniture. Today I'm going to show you how to use and make a scratch stock. So scratch stocks are an easy way to make uh, custom molding shapes. Uh, you might want to do this in an instance where you're trying to reproduce a molding on a piece of antique furniture and there's no commercial router bit or shaper cutter that duplicates the shape you're trying to uh, reproduce. Uh, it's also an easy way to, uh, to make a short length of molding for a special project or repair job or something like that. that um, that you might not want to go to the expense of purchasing uh, a router bit for a single use purpose. Um, a, a scratch stock is simply a thin piece of sheet metal that's captured in place in a wooden body in such a way that uh, you can use it to drag across a piece of wood and remove uh, wood to make molding. This particular shape is one that um, would have been used to uh, work a, a molding shape on maybe the front uh, face of a Chippendale chair or table leg. Of course, you can make any shape you want. Generally, scratch stock moldings are fairly shallow just because, as you can see, it's a fair amount of physical effort to remove the wood um, on a, if you're working a piece of hardwood. Here are some examples of some scratch stocks that I've made uh, for various uh, purposes in the shop. I've demonstrated the one for the, the leg molding. Uh, you can see I've got different beads, curved shapes worked onto the, uh, the edges of, this, of these various pieces of sheet metal. Uh, for the different shapes of moldings that I've needed to, to make. Uh, another commonly uh, used scratch stock is just to take the head of a wood screw, sort of file it into a blade shape, and you can use this to scratch a bead on the edge of a drawer front or um, as a decoration on a chair leg or something like that. This is a much smaller one that I made uh, with a narrow nose on it to reach up in the piercing of a chair slat on the back of a chair so that I could scratch a small bead along the edge of the, uh, of the opening in the chair splat. So you can see lots of different shapes, lots of different uses for scratch stock. And uh, next I'm going to gather some, uh, some stuff together and show you how to work uh, the sheet metal into whatever shape you want it to be to make your own. The cutter for your typical scratch stock would be a thin piece of sheet metal. Uh, this, as you can see from the teeth that I've partially ground off of it, is a, is a piece of a metal cutting bandsaw blade. Uh, it could be anything from mild steel. Sheet metal does not have to be tool steel. As a matter of fact, the softer it is, the easier it is to work. I'm, and I'm actually going to be working in this case on the back side of the bandsaw blade which is softer than the hardened edges are. So the first step would be to take a marker of some kind and simply darken the area that you're going to be working on. Next we'll take a, a scribe and I'll just do this freehand for the purposes of the demonstration, but uh, you know you might have a, a section of molding 
that you'd want to stand up here and scribe around so that you get the exact shape that you're wanting to, uh, to copy. But in any case, you would take, take your scribe and scratch a line through that marker that, that you've darkened the metal with. It's kind of hard to see that line. It's because it's such a fine mark but hopefully we're getting the reflection off of it in such a way that you will be able to see it. That gives you the line to go by. The next step... Oops. We'll clamp this in the vise. And using files of, of whichever shape best suit the shape of the molding that you're trying to duplicate, you would just simply file Now that we've got the metal shaped to the form that we want, the next step would be to actually make a wooden stock or a handle to hold it in. You can see most of my scratch stocks are, uh, are pretty down and dirty, uh, generally made in a hurry <laughs> for a job that I'm trying to get done. But the, uh, the metal is just held in place by, by tension from a pair of screws or three screws. So you basically have a scrap piece of wood, you saw a slot into it that's just about the right size to capture your, your bit or your blade. And the tension on the screws is what, is what holds the, uh, the piece of cutter in place. You can see this, this is another piece of that scrap bandsaw blade and I've got various shapes filed in, in each corner of it to make different types of molding that I've, that I've needed to make. So the next, the next step is to clamp that, slide it in the slot and clamp it in place allowing it to project just enough to work the molding that you're trying to cut. So we filed the shape into the, into the piece of sheet metal and I've got it clamped in place now, held by the tension of these three screws. You can see it's, it's just projecting enough and I'll hold the, the corner of the, what would act as the fence, the corner of this notch against the side of the stock and just using downward pressure and a slight inclination of the, uh, of the cutter. Let's start scratching. These guys are nice in that they cut in both directions. We filed that shape square across so that uh, it doesn't it doesn't really care whether you're pushing or, or pulling on it to get it to cut. So this is just a simple bead that might be worked on the, on the edge of a, of a chair leg or um, around the opening of a drawer, something like that. And you can see it's fairly easily done. Um, not really much to it. Now this is a straight piece of wood here and I've got a straight edge on my uh, fence. This cutter here I, I needed to, to work around a curved section of, of molding and so I've rounded the corners of the fence back. That, that allows you to follow a curved piece of wood and maintain the same setback on, on your molding that would be clamped in here. So this is a little more versatile. You could use it held square to the stock for straight work or it will, it will follow a curved piece 
just as easily. And that's about all I can tell you about scratch stocks. <laughs> well, I hope you found this video on making your own scratch stock useful and uh, now you'll be able to make moldings of your own whatever shape you need. Uh, I will be teaching some classes uh, in the uh, upcoming year at the Wooden Shop Traditional Woodworking School. Uh, we're looking at a class on uh, making a simple Chippendale chair, uh, carving a fan, a Moravian footstool, a Moravian candle box, and last but not least, an adjustable ratchet candle stand. You can see information on signing up for the classes uh, below the video. If you're interested in woodworking with a mix of hand tools and power tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours of amazing woodworkers, and our very popular tool buying guides. Make sure you subscribe to my free newsletter and check out my 10 steps for getting started in woodworking. Enjoy!